You tell yourself that nobody loves you and you're afraid that people will abandon you, but it doesn't have to be this way. There's a cause for this fear and there's a way that you can change it and move towards having the love, friends, family, and relationships that you want. And if you have a partner or a friend or a family member who has abandonment issues, then hopefully this video can help you to understand them a little bit better and to be able to connect with them in a deeper way. My name is Dante. I'm a registered psychologist from Australia and let's begin. So today we're going to talk about the origin of abandonment issues as well as the solutions to them. We're also going to talk about some of the common pitfalls people will likely face along the way to changing their abandonment issues. And to help us understand all of this and put it into context, we're going to be using an example of a person called Alex. Alex had learned harsh lessons in their life. During childhood, their father was never present and they never had a close connection with the family. As Alex grew into their teen and early adult years, every friendship and relationship they had devolved into fighting and somehow always resulted in people leaving them. And Alex's brain tried to figure out, why does this keep happening to me? Why is my life like this? Why do people keep leaving me? And the answer their brain came to was that I keep getting abandoned and rejected because I'm not lovable. Alex's brain internalized the message that I'm not good enough and that's the reason my father left us. That's the reason my family doesn't care about me. That's the reason my friendships and relationships keep failing. So because of this, Alex began to do two things to try to avoid the emotional pain that came from rejection. Alex would mostly try to avoid intimacy and only connect with people on a very superficial level. This was to avoid getting in too deep and this would prevent them from feeling that deep emotional hurt that would come if a relationship failed. The other thing that Alex began to do was testing people once a relationship actually began to form. Alex would begin to push people away or test them in other ways to see would they stick around or would they abandon them? Because Alex wanted to feel that sense of relief and reassurance that would come when they tested someone and they did stick around. But these two strategies of avoidance and testing were hurting Alex even more. On one hand, the avoidance made it extremely unlikely that any deep relationship would even have a chance of forming. And on the other hand, their relentless testing of people was actually pushing people away because nobody likes to have their loyalty and love questioned and tested. So the very actions that Alex was taking to try to protect themselves from emotional pain were the very actions that were driving people away. But I'm happy to say that Alex's story wasn't over there. Alex did in fact get to a point where they had a deep lasting friendship, where they did in fact have a nice good romantic relationship and where they were able to let down their barriers and trust the people around them. So let's talk about how they got there. The first thing that Alex did was detail what their goals actually were. And Alex decided that they in fact had three different goals that all tied in together. One was to be able to form deep connection with other people. The second goal was to attempt to establish a lasting romantic relationship. And the third goal was to be able to put down their barriers, to put down their anxiety and to be able to trust the people around them. So with their goals firmly understood, Alex then began to look at what were the barriers, what stood in the way of them now and the them that they wanted to be. Barrier number one that Alex came across were the negative beliefs that they had about themselves. Alex knew that they thought very, very poorly of themselves. That was not a surprise. Beliefs that crossed through their minds such as, I'm not lovable, nobody loves me, I'm not good enough, nobody cares about me, people will always leave me. These were common thoughts that ran through Alex's head, especially any time that they were interacting with other people. And because these negative beliefs and thoughts were constantly going through Alex's head, of course they easily predicted the worst case scenario. Of course if you believe internally that you're not good enough to be loved and people will always abandon and leave you, why on earth would you spend energy trying to connect with other people? Of course if you believed in your heart that you're not good enough to be loved, then when a relationship does begin to be formed, you'd be anxious and you'd be questioning and you'd be constantly wondering how long is this one going to last before they leave me? So changing these unhelpful negative beliefs about themselves into different beliefs that would be helpful to them reaching their goal was the first step. Alex started taking this first step by evaluating their negative beliefs, looking at how they were hurting their life, and coming to a decision of what is a new set of beliefs that I want to live my life by. Alex realized that the predominant negative belief in their life was that I'm not good enough. And it's this belief that I'm not good enough that made them think that I'm not good enough to be loved, I'm not good enough to have friendships, I'm not good enough for people to stick around. So they thought, what is the opposite of that? And they came to the belief of, I am good enough. And they knew that if they could internalize this new belief, that all of these unhelpful behaviors of avoidance and self-sabotage would also stop. Alex would begin to look out for the little signs day to day 
of times where people did treat them as if they were good and they were worthy to be around. And just as importantly, Alex every single day would try to notice and purposefully treat themselves as someone who was important and worthy. What Alex was doing was essentially looking for evidence and building evidence that supported this new belief of I am good enough. And day by day with this strategy and a couple of others, Alex began to track how true did they believe each of their beliefs were. And what they noticed day to day is their level of conviction in their negative self-beliefs began to go down. And day by day, little by little, their level of conviction in their positive self-beliefs began to go up. After quite a while, they noticed that their positive self-beliefs were in a much firmer place than their negative self-beliefs. And around the same time, their life began changing in some nice, subtle ways. Alex noticed that they weren't so hesitant in communicating with people. Alex noticed that they had a bit more motivation in reaching out and talking with people and previous friends. And one thing that Alex really liked is that they noticed that the automatic negative self-talk that would run through their head was happening much less frequently. And a real positive sign of change was that Alex actually began to reach out to a couple of former friends to rebuild some of these former friendships. But they knew that they hadn't reached their goal yet, so they evaluated again what stood between them and where they wanted to be. And they came across barrier number two, which was the self-sabotage. While Alex had begun to reform some of these old friendships and was laying the groundwork to establish some new ones, they really knew that they needed to change the reason for why these fell apart in the first place. And in part, it was that self-sabotage of theirs that needed to change. Alex knew that they needed to stop pushing their insecurities onto other people through limit testing and loyalty testing. And Alex also knew that while re-establishing old friendships was great, they needed to stop avoiding building new ones with new people as well. So what Alex knew they needed to do was to learn to be uncomfortable and to tolerate discomfort while A, meeting and introducing and building connections with new people, and B, being around people while a connection is there and getting deeper. Because for Alex, being in the midst of a relationship that's getting deeper and more connected was a terrifying thing. They still had these anxieties that people were going to leave them because they look at their past and they've learned from their past that this is what happens. And so they feel uncomfortable and they feel scared that it's gonna happen again. So Alex's mind screams at them and tells them, do something, test this person's loyalty, see if they're going to stick around because the mind wants reassurance. But Alex knew that they needed to stop this behavior. So what they needed to do was to sit in these moments and to learn to tolerate these discomforts and to just engage and be present and be with this person in the moment. To savor and enjoy the conversations and time spent together and not to direct their energy inward towards their insecure thoughts and feelings. And in order to stop avoiding new connections, Alex deliberately set a goal. Every single month, Alex was going to try to meet and talk and form a connection with at least one person. And Alex stuck to this goal really well. They went out for a lunch with a coworker. They organized a date with somebody off of a dating app. And bit by bit, they started to form new connections and spend time with their existing ones to deepen them. After Alex overcame their two main barriers by changing their beliefs about themselves and by stopping the self-sabotage, things were looking up. Alex was connecting with people beyond just the superficial level. And while the anxiety and the fear were still present to some degree, Alex was pushing through them. They were using strategies that they had to calm themselves down. They were using techniques to stay present and in the moment and not give in to their insecurities. And day to day, Alex was still looking for evidence that supported their new, helpful, positive beliefs. And all of this was leading to really great changes. For Alex, it seemed like everything was on the up and up. They were reaching out and repairing old relationships. They were reaching out and forming new relationships. And day to day, they were looking for pieces of evidence that supported and propped up their new, positive, helpful self-beliefs. Everything was going great until one day, suddenly out of the blue, Alex's father, whom they hadn't contacted with for years, suddenly got in touch. It was Alex's father, whom they hadn't seen in years and who was responsible for the traumatic rejection and abandonment wounds in the first place. And with him suddenly getting back into contact with Alex, they could feel themselves spiraling and they were terrified. Alex was terrified that all of the good progress they had been making was going to become undone. This triggering event of Alex's father suddenly re-emerging opened up these old childhood wounds and reignited their fears of rejection and abandonment. And while Alex had made great progress in the present day, practicing calming skills, looking for evidence that propped up new beliefs and really challenging themselves, their old traumatic wounds had never been treated. And so Alex went and found a trauma-informed therapist and they worked on closing and healing these wounds and making sure that they wouldn't be triggered again in the present day. The topic of trauma therapy itself is so big that it probably deserves an entire playlist of its own. 
And so it has one. The link is in the description and the first video in the series is already done. As Alex's journey began to wrap up, they had healed many of their old traumatic childhood wounds. They had strategies in the present day to regulate their emotions, to look for evidence that propped up their new beliefs, and they were deliberately challenging themselves by meeting new people and focusing on strengthening existing relationships. Alex had successfully addressed their past, and had tools for their present, and had laid the groundwork and plans for a successful future. In this example with Alex, they learned that by changing their thoughts and beliefs around themselves and changing their behaviours, they can change quite a lot about how their life is and how it functions. Alex developed more positive and helpful ways of thinking about themselves, and in turn developed more positive and helpful ways of acting in the world so that they could reach their goals. But this was a very simplified example, and not everybody is Alex. So let's talk about some of the common complications that people will typically run into on their journey for healing abandonment issues. One of the big ones is depression. So big in fact that it probably deserves an entire video of its own, and so it's going to get one in the near future. But the shortened version of it is this. If you're afraid of abandonment and rejection, you're probably going to become isolated from other people. As you become more isolated, your risk for becoming depressed increases. As you become depressed, your mood, your motivation, your energy levels, they all plummet. And as they go down, making these big changes to yourself and your life becomes harder and harder. So before you work on massive amounts of self-healing and self-changing and trauma therapy and so on, sometimes the best place to start is with just energy and motivation. And alleviating the depression in the first place is often the good first step. Social anxiety is another really big common problem. If you've been spending a long time just avoiding people and avoiding connections, then it's very easy to become anxious about engaging with people because you feel like you don't know how to do it now, you haven't done it in so long. Thankfully, however, I already have a full video on social anxiety, the link is in the description. And of course, many times people have barriers to their goals that they have no control over whatsoever. Sometimes there are just massive external world forces that get in our way. But like in this example with Alex, if they spent their mental energy thinking about problems that were so far out of their control they could do nothing to influence them, their life would have moved nowhere. But by spending their mental energy focusing on the things that were within their control, bit by bit and day by day they could move towards the place they wanted to be. If you are specifically interested in some of the techniques or the theory or the types of therapy used with this example with Alex, let me know as a comment and I can expand on it more. And I would love to ask you, did talking through this topic using the example of Alex make it easier to understand? I obviously want to make my content as understandable and legible as possible, so I would love that feedback. And do you have any questions or thoughts of your own about this topic? I would love to know. Other than that, if you are looking forward to my future videos about depression or trauma, you may consider subscribing because those videos are coming in the near future. Beyond that, I hope that this video was either informational, helpful, or entertaining, or some combination of all three, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.